One of the common problems is that the patient comes with a very poor visual acuity and uh, we present them with a visual acuity chart and in Snellen units the smallest is 6 over 5 or 6 over 6 that's a good visual acuity and if they can't see it best corrected that means with their contact lens, glasses or whatever they use to correct their sight we would flip the chart to a larger lattice and larger again and if the patient doesn't see them we will increase the size increase the size again patient doesn't see this increase the size again increase the size again again and we reach the point where there is no more letters left on that chart well after this it's very easy to send the patient to say this patient has a very poor visual acuity but we actually want to kind of put some figure next to it so whoever looks at our, our notes will be able to know exactly what the visual acuity was like. The, we presume that your chart will be at six meters distance, which is usually a standard. And the largest letter on the chart would be marked as 660 on Snell and visual acuity charts. The next step would be to stand in front of the chart and get one meter closer to the patient and show a specific number of fi fingers to the patient to see if that patient can read three, two, or one. That's five meter distance. If they cannot see that, if they can see that, we would mark it as five over sixty. If they cannot see it, we would step one meter closer. It will be four over sixty. Meter closer, three, two, and one. If the patient can count fingers, at this distance, roughly a meter distance, we can still mark that visual acuity 1 over 60, let's say right eye. Okay. But if they cannot see that distance, in, uh, that meter, then we need to get closer. And the next step would be, close your left eye for me please, and keep looking towards me. So I am now a meter and closer. So I'm at 33, 30 to 40 centimeters distance. And we'll ask the patient to read, if they can, how many fingers they see. And they usually, if they can see that, they would say it's three fingers. But if they cannot see that, the next step to quantify how bad is their sight is to ask the patient to tell you, what am I doing? What am I doing? You're moving away. Yeah. If the patient sees this movement, this is marked as hand movements vision and we know it's in a very close proximity to the eye. So hand movements vision. Let's presume the patient can't see hand movements. So the next step is, can they see light at all? And that's very important. And the light, you can use any source of light, ophthalmoscope or torch or anything. And you ask them if they can see light. Now they would say yes or no. If they cannot see light, that's if, it, if the light is bright, that's usually marked as no light perception. But if they can see light, we want to know another step. We want to know, is that source of light being projected at four quadrants of the retina? Is each of these quadrants working well? So we can kind of, light perception, we can further of describe as light perception with a poor or with a good projection meaning look towards me where is the light coming from okay you can point to the thing okay where is the light coming from now where is the light coming from now okay and where is the light coming from now okay so this patient now sees the light and sees it in all four quadrants and we would mark it perception of light with good projection. If the patient could not see where the light is coming from but they see vaguely there is a light there and they're not accurate in describing the direction of where the light is coming from we would say just light perception and if with a bright bright torch if they cannot see the light in a close proximity 
or movement or anything else, we would mark it as a no light perception or a blind eye.